Is YouTube worth it for creators in 2024? I mean, you guys have probably seen dozens of top YouTubers that have been around some for a decade that are now suddenly quitting and letting go of YouTube. Some of that is because they're burnt out and others are because their businesses are becoming cannibalized by these other content platforms, which makes it a lot harder to get the same result for the same amount of work. Now, one thing I've personally seen throughout these years on YouTube and starting a second channel is that there's really no correlation between how big your audience is, in other words, your subscriber count, and actually how much money you make, aka your ability to actually stay in business and want to keep doing this. But in this video, I thought I would share a little bit of a personal look at where I've been and what I'm working on going forward. What's up guys, Alex Hine or at Modern Health Monk. Let's get in. Okay, so let me set the stage first. First thing that happened was that I got really sick. About a couple years ago, or maybe closer to five at this point, I was in the second year of my doctoral program of traditional Chinese medicine. I was doing my doctorate because I had a lot of GI problems going throughout my 20s. And uh, I had lived in China, you guys have heard me say that, but then eventually it was a TCM doctor, an acupuncturist who got me the best results I'd ever seen. I had seen all the best GI specialists, conventional medical doctors. It was completely useless. My eyes were open to this professional in traditional Chinese medicine. I always knew I wanted to go to some kind of medical school. This was a little bit of an unusual universe course correction. And what happened was, ironically, during my first or second year of this doctoral program, you know, I was working like 60 hours in school and studying and then working 20 hours a week in my business to not die in crippling debt. I'm working 80 hours a week for literally years and my nervous system just collapsed. I mean, I had multiple ER visits at urgent care. I was having heart palpitations 20 times a day. And actually the funniest part of it was I was recording the audiobook for my second book, Milk the Pigeon, a field guide for anyone lost in their 20s, in Portland, Oregon. And it was recording that book. At the end of the recording of hours of speaking, I felt like I'm normally tired. I felt really, really exhausted and really fatigued. And I began having like persistent heart palpitations and a little bit of like chest pain and radiation down my left arm. And I was like, this is ironic. The healthy guy that has a six pack is gonna die of a heart attack or stroke from stress. In a panic, I start driving myself to urgent care and I call my dad on the way and I'm like, I'm having having chest pain, palpitations, and pain down my left arm. I go to urgent care and they're like, your EKG is a little irregular, but it's otherwise pretty normal. It's probably just a panic attack from stress. For those of you self-employed, this is like a normal day of an entrepreneur. I mean, every single entrepreneur I know has had at some point panic attacks or palpitations from the stress. As time goes on, it had took several years for that to go away. It wasn't like a, I'm gonna chill for a few months. It took five years for those symptoms to go away without any treatment anymore. Basically what happened was over time, you know, I graduated, finished my doctorate, pandemic, Kid, and I moved here to Los Angeles to open up my private practice because I found that, you know, I love YouTube and online stuff and I love teaching. I love writing books. I have so many more I want to write. And when I got really sick like that, it made me realize like I wanted to focus on what's more meaningful. And I found that helping people one-to-one -one, just a couple days a week was something that I found really, really happy and really meaningful coming from someone who'd been on the internet for a business for literal years. You know, I opened up this private practice in Los Angeles and I started a second YouTube channel just called Dr. Alex Hine. And it's all about healing with traditional Chinese medicine. On that channel, I'm talking about a bit about my healing journey. I've talked about a lot of these things that you'll never hear from a conventional doctor because I never heard these from any of the specialists or GI doctors that I saw. And I feel like it's my life purpose to share that with people now, both. You know, this channel is like how to build your most incredible life. That one is very specific on medicine and healing with traditional Chinese medicine. Now I have these two channels, right? Where I have a few videos here per month and I have videos there per month. And basically this is like this kind of reorganization period of trying to go through a healing journey and trying to remember what I love doing and try to figure out how do I stay an entrepreneur and not die young of a real heart attack, right? I mean, it's like I work out religiously. I have like single digit body fat and yet life has shown me that I wouldn't die from lack of diet or exercise. I would die from stress if I die young. And that that's something I have to be really, really careful about going forward. So then what happens is as time goes on, you know, the algorithms are always changing. And then TikTok comes on, and then IG Reels come on, and then YouTube Shorts come on. And all these platforms are trying to compete with one another for dominance. Think about it, I basically make content at my own cost, and that makes YouTube money 10 times what they pay me for ad revenue. These platforms just wanna keep themselves in business, and that's fine, it's just a tool. What happened was my same videos that initially were not a ton of work, but were performing well enough to keep me in business are now doing worse and worse and worse and worse without putting more and more and more money into them so that there are more and more high budget. And as a result, my business started slowing down a lot. And basically it became one of those things where it started being like, is this worth it in the long run, right? I have six figures of student debt. I now moved to an expensive city the first time in my life. I'm already getting over this exhaustion and health problems and I don't really know what to do. So I start this other channel and within like a year and a half, it was sending me patients in my local clinic in LA. And within like a year and a half or two, I was generating more money 
with less stress from that channel because patients were finding me and that personal one-to-one -one connection and the educational marketing was really helping them quite a lot. It was sort of like the universe saying like, you have this one business that's new and it's not that hard and it's working more financially and it's easier to keep you in business. So it sort of put me in this weird space where I don't ever wanna stop doing these because I love talking about self-growth. And my MO for my life is always, how do I reach my ultimate potential in everything? My career of traditional Chinese medicine is only one of those things. But there's still my love life and my friendships and my financial life and my career and traveling all over the world. And I'm walking the Camino de Santiago in May for two and a half weeks a journey of spirit for inner work. So now I wanna juggle the two of these. And what I really wanna share this is because I wanna get your opinion on the kind of content going forward. I don't plan to ever quit this channel, but there's a point where it becomes not worth it financially to keep uploading, especially a lot of videos. You know, now we're putting in two or three times the amount of money per video to make them better and better and better. But if it's not making that financially, it doesn't work. So I guess my question here for you is, you know, you're seeing these creators leaving for a reason, basically. And ultimately the only reason someone ever leaves a platform like this when they've built an established business is it becomes no longer worth it. Or they have another opportunity they're working on that's working better and it's easier. So I guess going forward, I really wanna to continue to focus on how to improve your life and design that next level version or reinvent your life. But do you wanna hear more about entrepreneurship? Like, do you wanna hear my business journey? How I built my brand? How I built two YouTube channels that have done, you know, each multiple six figures. Of course, one is decreasing steadily, but the other one is doing better. Do you wanna know more about like the creator journey? Because I feel if I talk more about entrepreneurship and business stuff, this could be a way to revitalize this channel and in terms of my own passion to talk about this and share the business stuff has been really, really hard, but it has changed my life more than almost anything because it's given me the freedom to live my life any way that I want in a meaningful way because it helps somebody else. If you want to learn more about the creator and entrepreneurship journey, let me know because that will influence my content choices a lot going forward, but it will always contain the same personal Alex touch of stories and growth and daily rituals. But this time, not only building the 2.0 version of you, but also how do you get the freedom to live your life any way you want because that's from entrepreneurship. Let me know down below, guys. Just leave a comment, please. I'm going to look back and actually respond to comments on this, let me know down below. And those are some of the changes I'm going to have going forward. And I want to share more about these experiments that changed my life and my healing journey.